So, so, so the overall idea here is to kind of look at different Linux kernel components and then, you know, try to see whether we should start looking at the possibility of, uh, you know, improving these components using hardware counters. What I intend to cover in the next few slides is some of the experiments I have been doing um, with hardware counters on PowerPC platforms. I do have a slides later giving some details about what these counters are and how they look. But then the primary motive is to also kind of share with the rest of the community what I have learned. And then we look at, uh, you know, whether we should start making these changes in, in Linux kernel so that uh, some of these areas can accommodate hardware counters, right? So these, these are three top level areas where I ended up spending my time looking at whether they can work with hardware counters, multi-generational LRU, transparent huge page and page promotion. Uh, for multi-generation LRU, uh, I did post an RFC, which kind of go into a high level details of how I envisioned uh, multi-generation LRU can start using hardware counters. But a high level idea, uh, but at a high level, the idea is to kind of like, as you know, MGLRU consists of multiple generations. So the idea is, uh, can we use hardware counters for classifying pages into the right generation, right? Uh, one of the primary challenge with uh, hardware counters or access count is, you know, uh, most of these architectures give ability to kind of know how many access have happened to a page. But with respect to multi-generational LRU, uh, what we are really interested in is in the relative hotness of a page so that we can place a page uh, in the right uh, generation, right? It's not about absolute hotness. It is about how hot it is compared to other pages in the system. So one of the big challenge uh, I ran into while, while kind of looking at multi-generational LRU is how do I estimate the relative hotness of a page using hardware counters or relative access count of a page using hardware counters, right? There were there are a few challenges with that. Um, quite a lot of these things can be improved uh, using better approximation algorithms. Uh, uh, but then I ended up looking at, uh, uh, so for each uh, LRU VEC uh, under MMCG per NUMA node, uh, you know, there are a set of pages, uh, you kind of uh, look at the pages in the youngest generation and the oldest generation and try to kind of come up with an estimation of what is the maximum hotness or what is the maximum access count and what is the minimum access count. It's an approximation because we can't go through all the pages in the LRU VEC because that's going to be really, really heavy. Uh, once you get the approximation of the maximum access and the minimum access count, then uh, whenever you look at a page, you look at this max and the min access count and using that classify the page that you are interested in into the right uh, generation, right? So if you have four generation, the max and the min can be classified into four groups and then a page of access count Y get placed into one of these four groups or four generations, right? We could also use uh, different mechanisms or like a K-mean clustering, which kind of, uh, you know, takes a sample of access count and then, kind of creates four groups or four clusters. And then uh, later, whenever you get a page, you can classify them into one of these clusters. There are uh, effects of using complex, more compute intensive work in these classifications. I have a slide that goes into what I learned by trying simple uh, classification and complex classification like came in clustering. So once, uh, and, and another interesting details about MGLRU is uh, it kind of allows you uh, a sorting phase uh, during reclaim, uh, it's called sort folios, where, uh, you know, uh, right now MGLRU look at the, the generation stored in page flags uh, to kind of move the pages across generations. Uh, these page flag generation values are, are, are populated during like, you know, while we are looking around during a, while we are looking for the folio reference of a page, we look around nearby PTEs, get the PFNs hotness, and that is used to play, convert it to a generation. And we store that in the, in, in the folio flags. Similarly, for architectures like x86 and ARM, um, which actually supports the hardware uh, access reference bits, um, you know, there is a mechanism where we kind of walk through all the MM in an MCG and then we scan the pages and things like that. There also we kind of look at the page reference bit and then kind of 
classify the pages into the youngest generation and put the youngest generation details in the page flags. So these uh, generation details stored in page flags are used to uh, you know, move them into different generations during the sorting phase. So what I ended up doing uh, with respect to my change is uh, instead of using page flags generation, use the uh, access count based classification that I did to place them in the right generation, right? There are a few advantage of doing that. One is you can completely skip the page table walk because we are not looking at reference with four kind of like, you know, doing the generation walk. You don't need to do page table look around during our map walk. So that kind of cut the cost of uh, some of the art table walk. And, and essentially you could also save the, if you really say that I don't want to save generations in page flags, we could save that bit and then avoid saving generations in page flags. There are like approximately six bits that we use in page flags, um, you know, which, which can be saved by, by doing this. Uh, having said that, I also want to look at some of the numbers. I just want to make sure that we understand that optimizing reclaim is really, really tricky uh, because it, it's heavily optimized and different workloads have different uh, behaviors. So, uh, one of the thing I try to do is I kind of ran a test with MongoDB. As you could see, the, when I used uh, hardware counters, the performance dropped. Even though the graph shows kind of like a large drop, it is, it's like a 1.3 percentage of drop. There is extensive reclaim, um, uh, as can be seen by the next slides. This is the working set refault. So there is heavy uh, working set refault count. Um, you know, even the working set refault count decreased by around minus 2.8 percent. The performance didn't uh, impact much. This is a RAM disk swap that I'm using uh, for for doing my experiment. Uh, when I went to NVMe, uh, the 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 reduction in the working set refault, which which says that we are able to kind of uh, classify the pages much better looking at the hardware access counts because we are not refaulting pages similar to looking into reference bit um, you know so and when i use an nvme swap disk the cost of making the wrong decision is higher and hence i see some improvements in performance but you could always debate that that's in the noise range at 0.2 percent mongodb right uh, so this is this is the default. I have a seven uh, percent reduction in refaults with the NVMe swap disk. I also did another experiments with the memcached. So one of the few things I actually ended up doing, as I said, I was using um, you know hardware counters in the in the sorting phase. We could also completely kill the folio reference lookup, right? Looking at the page table reference bit completely, right? So it's kind of like the complete R map we can avoid. If I try to do that, uh, the performance improves. Uh, really good like there's a six percent improvements in memcached but then there are some interesting observations that i had so this is the advanced classification the red bar the advanced classification which is clustering i also have a, a flame graph which shows why the performance dropped uh, so so here is the interesting thing that happened right when i completely removed the folio referenced rmap walk completely and completely depend on the hardware reference count the the refaults actually increased dramatically, uh, right? I am yet to find out why. The performance also improved dramatically, but the refaults also increased dramatically. My, uh, my, uh, my, my thinking at this point, I'm, I haven't actually collected traces to confirm this. It, it's probably because of the initial stages where the hotness is not good enough to classify the page, and and hence because we are looking only at the hotness. We consider all the pages as uh, you know reclaimable, and we reclaim them, and you know, um, and hence there is a large increase in the refault rate. That's my theory at this point, but I really don't know, because uh, otherwise the performance improvement is not explained, right? We have a six percent improvement if I completely remove our map work. So that, that's on the MGLRU side. As as my observation is that optimizing um, multi-generational LRU is kind of really really tricky. Um, because of the cost involved in, in kind of estimating the relative hotness. This is the flame graph kind of view of multi-generational LRU. As, as you could see, like, you know, there is there is folio reference, the RMAP walk, right? There's the big chunk here. Uh, and then, you know, there is page out, which is the big chunk there, right? Um, isolate folios is not, not that big a chunk, but then folio reference is, is one of the big chunk that, that we have, right? So if I use the hardware counters, right, um, as you could see, this part is, is where we are reading hardware counters. So it, it do come uh, in, 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 the, in the cost. We are, sp we are spending some time reading the hardware counters. But then we are also able to reduce the number of pages in the oldest generation and folio reference kind of reduced, right? We, our map walk kind of reduced uh, much because we don't have a lot of uh, hot pages in the oldest generation now. 
because uh, sorting is kind of classifying the pages better. But then I am also now doing some extra work holding um, uh, LRUV clock. So you could see this this uh, LRUVEC lock starts appearing, right? Increased contention on LRUVEC, and and that's one of the challenge uh, with with doing this in um, you know MGLRU because if you try to do too much, the locking contention keep keep going up. So as I said, if I try to do an advanced classification where it's a recursive function, the k-min clustering, uh, my lock contention actually shoots up. The, the uh, uh, RMAP work completely disappeared because I'm not using uh, you know reference bit at all. So the RMAP work completely gone. So ideally this should have improved a lot of uh, performance, but then since I'm doing like a lot of work within uh, holding the LRU work, the lock contention kind of increased. So uh, MGLRU and using hardware counters, these are some of the learnings I have. We should probably look at whether this is really worth doing or, or not, right? Quickly going to the other area where I want to kind of look at. This is one area where I actually found a lot of benefit. Um, so one of the big challenge with transparent huge page is the utilization of transparent huge page. We have single bit in the page table reference, uh, page table entry, which track the access to the 2MB. But there can be access scenarios where not the entire 2MB is accessed in a unique fashion, right? There can be a lot of hidden cold pages inside a huge page, which is hiding as sub pages, right? Um, so the logic here is that uh, when we are doing an R map walk, we look at the page table reference bit, find that the 2MB page is, is hot. We look at the utilization metrics using hardware counters and decide whether uh, you know, uh, whether the folio need to be kind of like active, kept or reclaimed, right? I mean, you know, there are three options, whether it should be reclaimed, whether it should be put back as active or whether it should be kept so that it given one more chance in the same uh, oldest generation. We could actually use hardware counters for making this decision, right? Uh, uh, the hardware counters can actually count uh, the access count uh, at, at configurable page size, at least on PPC64 architecture. So uh, we could actually count the access to 64K uh, chunks within a 2MB range, right? So we could find the sparseness of the access using algorithms like Gini index, which, which is kind of generally used to find sparseness of a range of numbers and that can be used to kind of find out how effectively these pages are classified. Uh, so this, this picture kind of gives it a high level what, what I'm talking about. So there are a lot of cold pages and very few hot pages and there is a single reference bit. So whenever that two hot pages is kept uh, for all practical purpose, the current kernel will consider the entire 2MB page as like a utilized hot page. So the, the test that I ran, it's really hard to find a workload that 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 hit this specific condition. Uh, at least I haven't been able to replicate it in a MongoDB or a memcached kind of a workload. So we ended up doing like a, a, a micro benchmark. So I had like one a few 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 process doing writing every page of a 2MB kind of like huge page and few process writing only four pages of like every um, you know 2MB page. So you know, so the example I, that the config I have is like you know every page it is touching an 8GB kind of thing, and like in you know, every few pages, like the four pages in a 2MB, it's it's touching less frequently, right? I mean you know it's not touching all the one, but then the the right few pages thread is running really really fast, right? Because right every page is going to touch every 64K page. In, in my case, every 64K page, by the time it comes to touch or the next huge page, it takes some time. And, and I also don't run it that fast. I have like some 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 wait time in between, right? So uh, this is this is really good number actually actually found. Uh, actually, if you could see, I would spend some time trying to explain this chart. It's, it's slightly uh, you know overloaded. So the top x-axis is the time taken We're using hardware counters. As you could see, the entire test is able to finish in 70 seconds, uh, whereas the bottom x-axis is the time it takes to finish the same test when hardware counters are not used. So it takes around 800 seconds to finish the test, right? Um, uh, so as you could see, like, you know, the swap swap out kind of like th the reason why there is no swap out is that um, using hardware counters, we are able to identify the hidden cold pages and split those huge pages. Right. Uh, and once we split those huge pages, they were never swapped back in because they are really cold. We are not accessing them back in. And hence the application doesn't. Uh, uh, Trash or doesn't doesn't reclaim at all, right? So there is no additional swapping at all once we are able to identify these cold pages and send the cold pages to swap. Uh, so that's 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 essentially what this page is trying to convey. And and as you could see, when we are not using uh, the red line is uh, non-huge page, 
like you know not using hardware counters and the green line is using hardware counters so when when we are not using hardware counters as you could see there is 19 gb of usage because if you go previously you could see that the total memory right 26 gb of the, it's still consuming that 26 gb 19 gb of huge pages and when i use hardware counters page uh, present in the system is 7 gb which kind of maps to the 8 gb of write every page right so it essentially says that using hardware counters we are able to detect hidden cold pages really really well and we are able to complete the micro benchmark uh, in about 70 seconds compared to 800 to 700 seconds without using hardware counters so i do believe that this is one area we could we could definitely uh, find 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 use with, with hardware counters, right? I also want to spend some time on page promotion. I think we uh, we also have some slides covering the same thing. Uh, so one of the big challenge with page promotion is uh, the cost of Numa Falls. And I also believe that one of the interesting thing that page promotion needs to also do is to kind of the relative hotness of a page as compared to the to the DRAM node where I am moving, right? So essentially what we want to do for page promotion is pick the pages from the youngest generation in like uh, a slow memory, uh, right? Um, that's the youngest generation in the, uh, there because that's the hottest page there. And compare that hotness with the hotness of the oldest generation where I'm moving, right? There's no point in moving a hot page to a DRAM node wherein that replace that movement costs a replacement of a hot page there, right? So we need a relative comparison between hotness of a page from one NUMA node to hotness of a page in another NUMA node. And LRUVEC doesn't help you achieve that, right? LRUVEC kind of gives you, the, the current reference bit base one kind of gives you uh, relative hotness of pages within an LRUVEC, right? So using hardware counters, we can definitely compare the access count of hottest page in a, in a slow memory node and the, and, the, and the hotness of like the oldest generation page in a DRAM node. And only if the, the, the page in the slow memory node is hottest, hotter than the other one, we kind of do the promotion, right? Uh, so uh, unfortunately, I have not been able to do a test on this because I don't have like a hardware which kind of simulate this. The, the kind of like the device memory model that we have kind of use DRAM as the backend and, and I was kind of waiting to get a low latency memory device which kind of help me evaluate the performance implication of that. But, uh, you know, coding this is pretty simple. Uh, you know, we could actually offload it to kind of like a, a, a like, like K-Swap D, we could look at a K-Promote D, which can kind of do this periodically comparing the hotness between between different NUMA nodes, right? Uh, uh, I, will, I will come back to this if, if there's time. Uh, I just want to kind of, because during the mailing list discussion, there are a few other things that, that got discussed. Can Demon be one kind of use case where all these hardware counters could be integrated and can we kind of avoid the rest of the kernel getting polluted with all these different uh, dynamics, right? Different architectures is going to have different hardware counter mechanism, right? One of the thing I actually kind of, uh, we actually implemented a kind of like uh, a, a daemon uh, operations, uh, which is kind of like HCAP ADDR and I have some evaluation given later. But one of the big challenge I found with the daemon is the ability to evaluate how good it is, right? I mean, because there is nothing like, okay, this is the configuration you run daemon and then mysql or like memcached or a mongodb with ycsd it's not easy to evaluate daemon because there's a lot of configuration that that daemon needs to have what i ended up doing though is with, with the changes that i did so essentially this is uh, uh, you know paddr daemon module where instead of using reference bit we are using hardware counters very simple right instead of using a reference bit, we straight away switched to hardware counters and did the, did some evaluation. So we, I actually use the dedupe test of daemon and you know there is a lot of variance once you use hardware counters, probably because of sampling and other details. But then overall it kind of showed for this dedupe test, uh, right? The memory usage is probably the criteria which we want to kind of, the idea here is proactive reclaim where I can kind of reduce the amount of memory used by Dido, making sure that the time to execute doesn't change. So we are able to kind of reduce the memory usage by around 12% switching to hardware counters. So even though daemon may not be able to use it for like a memcached or a generic workload, probably there are ways we can use that. But I think there is also value of looking at hardware counters being exploited by daemon operations uh, as shown by this example, right? Uh, since proactive reclaim was also kind of thing that I looked at while looking at DDoop, uh, I also want to kind of throw the idea that is there a value in exposing this to user space, like, uh, uh, you know, out of memory daemon, um, um, you know, do do we want to have uh, counters there so that 
these user space application can make intelligent decisions of access counts, right? Uh, that's that's mostly what I had. Uh, you know, this is this is the last one legal statement. Uh, this is my view and not of IBM view. Uh, so if there is interest, I could spend some time on the hardware counters. Uh, otherwise, I, you know, if there are any questions, I can take that. And I think there is one other slide from you if you want to go through, right? You want to speak? Sure. Uh, thank, thanks. Uh, I, I, just, I just want to take a few moments to expand one aspect uh, from uh, basically what uh, Anish just mentioned about the promotion. So basically promotion is one of the very key challenges for the uh, memory theory, right? So as we can see right now, so we have actually multiple ways to, to, to help us identify hot pages on those kind of far memory nodes. So for example, there's a page fault and uh, we have a traditional access-based scanning and then there's a new access counters. We also have the performance uh, uh, monitoring modules that PEPs and uh, AMD, IBS and so on. So I, I think there could be also new hardware features coming down the line, right? So next slide. Uh, can you move to next? Yes, yeah, thank you. So the, the question is that, uh, I mean, how can we uh, unify, uh, basically uh, have a unified framework to help us to do the promotion, right? So right now, I think uh, the, the current uh, infrastructure is uh, auto uh, that that really just use the page for it. But can we actually uh, have a more general framework to, to use, leverage all these kind of hardware uh, 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 abilities? So there's some kind of thought I'm putting over here. So the idea is that we can have an abstraction layer uh, that basically can uh, harvest the, the hot page from those kind of far memory nodes. And uh, those, this, uh, this engine can make use of different backends and it can provide the list of hard pages so that uh, we can have a dedicated demo to do this kind of promotion, uh, similar to case of D, uh, I think which uh, Anish also just mentioned, right? So the benefit of that is could be, we can do this uh, outside of the synchronous page for the handler. So next slide. Yeah, yeah so we actually done some kind of early uh, implementation with this, but uh, un only at the user space, because uh, we want to leverage uh, uh, the, the PEPs sampling, which is uh, much easier to do to program from user space. And at the same time, also uh, use the uh, access-based scanning uh, to both kind of signals to, for us to identify the hard pages. So the way we do that, we basically stream all this kind of page access event uh, to user space through so BPF and the perf uh, buffers, which is not very cheap, uh, then we, we, we basically, the user space can make a decision, identify hard page, and then basically tell kernel uh, which page to migrate. So uh, this actually works pretty well. We have some more details on this implementation in our uh, paper in S plus this year. So I, I think the, the, the hardware, to, to be clear, the hardware we use here is uh, Intel Optin as a lower, lower and uh, lower tier memory. And then we, we basically move page back and forth between that one and the DRAM. Right? So the question in the next slide, uh, the question is that, I mean, can we bring uh, this kind of idea uh, to, to kernel so that uh, we can have a more performance and, uh, uh, the, uh, and also implementation but to benefit by other people as well, right? So, I mean, there's some idea that we could extend the autonomy for that, but I think one concern I have here is that uh, the hardware counters like uh, the access counter, right? So they are not really like organized around VMAs. They are more like a PFM based. Right? So I think Autonuma may not be a best fit for that. So I think uh, a niche extend multi-gen to use the uh, access counters. So I think that might be a good idea there. In particular, we can leverage the, the generation, especially the youngest generations and their timestamp to help us to rank the hard page there, right? Then we can have this kind of background uh, kernel threads for those doing this kind of asynchronous promotions and uh, apply, even apply certain uh, policies applied to uh, that specific to a particular job. Yeah. So that's it for, for some thoughts I have here to regarding this uh, hardware based prom promotion. So I, I wonder whether only feedback on this or not. Yeah, I think overall, I think what we are looking for is, you know, should we start um, 
getting these changes into kernel somewhere or other, or is it too early or like, you know, or should it all be done in like daemon or should it be completely user space or, you know? One of the observations the last time we talked about hardware assisted was that the user space might already be wanting to use those counters itself and, and that we didn't want to, people upgrade their kernel, all of a sudden they can't run their analysis tools anymore because the kernel's consumed all the performance counters. Like, what do you think yeah, about but that? That's true, if it is performance, that's true if it is performance counters, but that's not true if, you, if there is dedicated counters like we have in PPC64, right? I mean, if there is interest, I can walk through the counter. I mean, it's, it's great. It's a region where there is 64-bit counter for each PFN, and the count value get increased based on the hotness and get decreased based on time. Okay, so, so this is really for a new class of counters that really aren't already, there's no perf legacy for these counters. Exactly. It's a memory region. You can index into that region based on PFN, like, you know, uh, so every PFN get a 64-bit. Um, you can go there, look at the access count. Uh, the, the count, count decays based on time, so if you are not touching the page for some time, the count value decreases. So it's completely independent of PMU and, and other things. And I think, and I believe that that's one nice way we should probably encourage other hardware vendors to also start looking at the possibility of having such counters, because uh, as as I showed in the THP utilization, there's definitely value in doing this in THP utilization. And I, and I do believe that page promotion also will find really good results with counters like that. So, because on on Waze slide it had pebs and other things, so I guess what you're saying is like correct, correct. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe we do like the dedicated stuff and figure out the pebs things and other like perf perf conflict stuff as a separate discussion. Yeah, I, I think I, I want to clarify that we use pebs because that's the only thing available. Pebs are actually not really ideal for page promotions, uh, but uh, uh, it does help on the current hardware. Particularly because, uh, uh, you, as you know, that the Intel, at least at that time, we can actually filter the access to only this kind of opt-in devices, so that uh, it gives us uh, basically uh, very, uh, very targeted uh, access that we can monitor. Right? But uh, if there's a better counter like uh, this uh, IBM uh, access counter, and uh, it's all on hardware and they're not really shared with other use cases, I think that will be even better. So we we definitely looking for these kind of new new capabilities for other vendors. Hello. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much for any share of the hardware counter based daemon operations set. Uh, implementation and testing research. I think that such a hardware counter-based uh, new daemon operation set could be a very good idea, and actually that's what I wanted to implement on my own when I get a time slot. I just, I always wanted to do that, but I just didn't have a time slot for doing that. So I think that could be very good approach for daemon and also looking forward for the RFC patch set or patch set for that. Sure. I, I can start sending them across. I can start sending them across. But one big challenge with the daemon is the ability to kind of use daemon for generic workload like memcached or like MongoDB, right? Like I have this, ex I mean, the inability to kind of like uh, come up with the default values, which is useful for doing some kind of like, uh, you know, proactive reclaim or promotion, right? I think promotion could be, I mean, one of the thing I was looking at is can daemon do promotion, right? I mean, can daemon be the vehicle through which we implement the promotion, right? I mean. Yeah, that's also very important. That's also very important part. And we also have some ideas for that, including some feedback based auto tuning and also having some auto tuning of the monitoring parameters and the schemes parameters and adding some and demos action for promotion and demotion of the memory. And also, there are some ongoing ideas I think we can uh, okay. do continue the discussion after this conference, yeah. But sure. by default, having the hardware counter-based operation set could be uh, anyway very useful for, even though we don't have the good default parameters or auto-tuning like uh, features, I think that could, uh, Anyway, benefit some profiling purpose use of daemon, I think. 
At what point does something that's kind of proven out in the daemon space move over to like the generic MM? Like, does that question make sense? Because I'm 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 kind of daemon ignorant, but like, is like this sounds sound, this sounds like something we'd want everybody to use all the time versus like having to say, oh no, you need the special daemon setup, and you need and your workload, you need these settings. Like, like at what point do, do things become? Daemon plugins versus like like kind of default kernel behavior, is that a consideration? Yeah, so that's also to be discussed. But yeah, for going to that stage, I think we would need some more discussion about the default config and default behaviors and whether to enable daemon by default or not. And but at this point, I think yeah, we I, can I, start from the. What Dan is also kind of getting. What Dan is also kind of getting to is like, if you kind of use daemon for like relative hotness detection and things like that, it's kind of building an infrastructure which is parallel to our LRU, right? I mean, you know, it's kind of like, it's not it's not making use of LRU. Like, like for example, um, uh, the, the proactive reclaim work Johannes did, uh, you know, it's like the, the MemCG reclaim, right? Um, it's kind of using the MemGLRU for reclaiming. It's just hinting that go, go and reclaim some 2MB so that it can do a better working set estimate. What's not really true with Daemon uh, because of the fact that it does reclaim independent of the position of the page within an LRU because it has its own way of estimating uh, things. So my, my take is, you know, that, that's that's a confusion I had, right? I suppose if I'm doing page promotion, should it be a K promote D or should it be a Daemon plugin, right? I mean, which way we should go? Yeah, I, I, I feel like regarding integration, a, a sticking point here is that uh, now we have the multi-gen, which is also use the page, uh, page hardware counters to, to basically uh, sort a page into different LRUs. The demo essentially doing kind of similar thing in the same space, right? So if you kind of merge them, I think this is essentially the some problem we need to solve between these two. Okay, I think that's, I think we're at time for this session. Oh, we had one more question. Thanks for that. Okay, next, yeah, next presenter is coming up. Thank you.